Hey guys, this is Brad with Lucky 7 Racing and the Cars Coffee and Donut Automotive event that happens once a month in San Diego, California. I'm doing another vehicle review today, but instead of it being a sports car like I've done in the past, I'm actually in something a little bit different with a luxury SUV. This is the Infiniti QX80, which is part of the flagship models that come from Infiniti of their SUV lineup. It's a pretty nice vehicle. I've never actually had the opportunity to drive around in something of this caliber. And it ranks right up there with some of the other offerings from BMW, Mercedes, and of course maybe even Audi and Alfa Romeo. But it is a little bit of a larger SUV, so we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at what you get and some of the creature comforts that are involved with the interior and the drivability. So let's take a look at what we've got. And of course, starting off with the interior, as you guys can see as I'm sitting here, it's leather all throughout the car. It makes it really, really nice in here. In fact, the model that we're testing is brand new. I had picked this thing up and it had about 90 miles on it. We've put about 150 on it in our test. And we're probably gonna put a little bit more on it here as the weekend goes on. Now, the leather is combined with a little bit of an aluminum trim and a dark burl wood accent that really sets off the interior nicely. It gives it a really clean look, and it actually matches pretty nicely with the exterior as well and some of the trim features that you have. And it just sets the car apart from other vehicles on the road. Even though it is silver, and silver is kind of a bland color from one aspect, it does give it a really unique look in, in some of the functions and features that are all throughout the interior here. And some of the things you can't see is actually the navigation, which is sitting right here in the center of the dash, along with the AM, FM, your climate control, and of course we've got things in the center console. The navigation unit is actually in a position that I don't really like, and I kind of knock Infinity for this because they didn't include a heads-up display on this vehicle. You actually have to look over and take your eyes off the road to see the navigation. Now, of course, if you have the voice turned up, it tells you where you're going, and you don't have to worry so much about looking down at it, but your radio settings and your climate control settings are just below that. And so you have to look down and away, and you don't have a heads-up display, as I've experienced in other vehicles, where you can actually see what's going on with your radio and the navigation and your climate control and not have to take your eyes off the road. And for a vehicle that starts out at right around 70,000 to as much as 80,000 with all the options and bells and whistles, I would expect that to be a feature that's included in this. Now this is the 2020. The 2021 may have actually included that, but unfortunately the 2021 wasn't available. So I'm testing one that's about a year older, but it still has a lot of the same functions and features of what you get in the 2021. So keep that in mind as you listen to this and as you watch this. Now the center console does include, you know, your shifting, um, your shifting package here. It's a seven speed automatic transmission. You can keep the vehicle in drive as we're doing and just cruising along down the road, or you can shift it over in manual mode. And of course you have seven automatic gears that you can shift through. And as you're driving along, shift up and down as you may see fit and enjoy your driving. Just keep in mind, this is a 6,000 pound SUV. You're not really gonna be hot riding this thing around corners, although it does have some pretty decent handling aspects with the magnetic suspension that's included with the chassis. The one thing it doesn't have with the magnetic suspension is you can't really adjust its uh, controllability. And what that is, is when I've driven sports cars, and a lot of modern sports cars that feature magnetic suspension, what happens is you can put it in different modes, and of course it firms up the ride quality, gives you a little bit more feedback in the steering wheel. You don't get that with this model. So it's something that, you know, as that sort of thing is offered in the vehicle, I would expect Infinity to actually include that as an option for what you've got in some of the control functions. The other things you have down here is you do have your satellite navigation control in the center console. You can also do it here. You have touch screens with your center screens. And then of course you have your transmission control. Now I currently have an automatic which puts it in a two wheel drive mode. I can stick it in four high or four low. I have a snow mode or a wet weather mode from when it's raining, which of course reduces power to the tires as you're driving down the road so you don't have any wheel spin. There's also a tow option. And then you can completely take traction control off, which I don't know if that's necessarily something you want to do in this vehicle but it is there it's a function that's available to you now the engine in this is a 5.6 liter 400 horsepower engine it shares the same motor with the Nissan Armada and it's got the same performance output now from one aspect to another with the Infiniti at 70,000 as a starting package to be sharing the same motor as the Nissan Armada I would expect there to be a little bit more engine performance the vehicle does get up and go pretty decently and especially for 6,000 pounds it's got a 0 to 60 time of about 5.9 seconds that's pretty decent but when you take a look at the BMW X7 the models that come from Mercedes even the Alfa Romeo and some of the models from Audi that are within the same class they actually have a quicker 0 to 60 time so it's lacking a little bit in its performance from that aspect 
you've got four-wheel disc brakes and of course you've got ABS which keeps you from locking up the tires in case you ever have to brake really hard going down the road and that of course is just a nice function to have to give you some more controllability of the vehicle as you're cruising along and today we're just kind of taking it easy we're in our area where we like to do a lot of vehicle tests and I'm taking it through some pretty twisty roads I don't have a lot of body lean in the vehicle which is nice as you go around corners you do have decent control and there's good feedback in through the steering wheel as I go around corners be it a smoother corner or a little bit of a sharper corner I've got a lot of control there which is nice especially for something that's this big it's not something you would normally you know think would be the norm but infinity's done a really good job they've done their research they've taken a lot of what's come from nissan and a lot of what they've researched and applied that to the qx80 to be, be able to give you an all-around really nice package so it's something that you can benefit from and base in you know essentially with what you get with infinity is of course the higher end aspect of what you see here now the back row that's behind me for the second row seating, it does fit people really well. As I said, I had some taller guys sitting back there. They had some leg room. Third row seating is definitely kind of tight, as I said earlier. It's something where you wouldn't really have someone my height back there. You may have a couple of kids back there that might be able to fit a little bit easier. And it's also something that, you know, like I said, if you keep the third row seats up, you don't have a lot of storage back there. So it's something where you may end up having to constantly leave it down. But if you do put people back there, they've got some comforts, they've got things that you wouldn't normally have in your entry level smaller or mid-sized SUVs. And to be able to have that in this is just another aspect that Infinity gives you with this type of, ve of a vehicle. Now your cruise control and um, your radio settings of course are also on the steering wheel. Cruise control is pretty simple, you set it and forget it. But it does have a unique feature where as you're going down the road you can set how close you want to be to the other vehicle that's in front of you. And what's nice about this is that if you're cruising along down the freeway at 75 miles an hour like we do here in California and you're coming up on another vehicle that doesn't seem to be able to be on pace with everybody else, the vehicle will automatically back off from the other vehicle in front of you. You don't have to shut cruise control off, you don't have to hit the brakes, and it allows you to pace the other vehicle at a safe distance. And you can actually set how close you want to pace that vehicle. It's something that's somewhat new. Uh, I believe Tesla does this with a lot of their cars and a lot of their uh, driving functions and features. And it's something that I hope I get to test out with the Tesla because as I understand it, they're one of the first companies that have actually offered this when they first came out. And of course, other companies are starting to do this as more as well with their luxury options. The sports cars that I've driven don't have that feature. They figure you're gonna set it and you're gonna have to control the thing and not really drive in such a luxury manner. So it's something that it's nice to this and it's something that's unique to the QX80 that we're driving along in. So now that we've taken a look at a little bit of the interior, we're gonna go out, take a little bit of a look at what else you've got with us. We'll take a closer look at the engine. We're gonna take a look at the back, as I've explained, and some of the other close-up options of what you have here and some of the features of the interior and the controls. So let's cruise up here and let's take a look. About 80 grand this car isn't all that bad of a cruiser and that's of course for the higher end model and as we're testing this this is probably the mid-range model that we've got now with the engine package that we've got it's a 5.6 liter engine from nissan it's the same thing that you get in the nissan armada which we can take a closer look at and with 400 horsepower it's actually going to get you down the road pretty decently especially here in southern california and trying to merge into traffic on the freeway but it's really not a lot of bells and whistles on this thing and it's pretty much the Nissan Armada engine with Infinity badging. And with the price that we're testing this vehicle at, compared to the Armada, it's almost better to go with the Armada or to go with the lower based option, Infinity QX80, because what you get with this and some of the options that you get, you get the same thing out of the Armada for a little bit less money. So from a cost perspective, it's almost better to go with the Nissan option. Now, with the 5.6 liter engine, you're going to get to 0 to 60 in about 5.9 seconds, which compared to the BMW X7 and the Mercedes offering, they're actually a little bit quicker. But with 6,000 pounds behind this SUV, that's not bad getting you down the road. If we take a closer look at the interior, with all the bells and whistles that it's got, you also have a lot of space and capacity for different passengers. You can fit two people in the back, you can fit two more people behind the driver and the passengers, and then you have three seats across the back that you can fit, say, a couple of 12-year-old kids if you wanted to because of the amount of leg room that's back there. The one thing that I did notice, though, especially about the back space, as we take a look, 
You've got a push button off the key to be able to open the back, which is a really nice feature, especially if your hands are full and you're at the store. But the downside to it is that you don't have a lot of room back here. There's really maybe enough room for a set of golf clubs if you're lucky, maybe a few bags of groceries. The rear seats do fold down thanks to some buttons that are on the uh, sides right behind the two rear passenger seats. And it allows these to fold down and of course gives you a little bit more room. So if you have a little bit larger luggage, you've got a bunch of golf bags, or if like me, you're trying to go to the racetrack and you've got your giant gear bag with you, you can finally fit that in the back along with the cooler and everything else that I carry whenever I'm on the road going to the track. And of course, it's got a nice feature where you can hit the button and the back hatch closes for you. You can also do it right off the key. So there's not a lot of having to pull down. If you're a little old lady and you're having to jump up to reach the thing, it makes it really easy to just shut. So the back seats, of course, have the same styling that carries over from the front. You've got leather all the way throughout. You've got your own actually climate controls in the back as well. And then you also have USB connections that you can plug in your phone. And then everybody that's sitting in the back can of course sit there and be on their phone and play around and if you've got kids in the back you know you can ignore them and they can be on their phone and they're all nice and set being a six foot tall guy and being somewhat average height i sit really easily in the back seat and there's plenty of leg room i had a couple of friends sit in this car earlier and they're a little bit bigger than i am and they sat in the back really comfortably as well so if you're a little bit bigger than the average person you can fit in the back of this thing pretty comfortably versus other SUVs, especially smaller SUVs, you don't have as much leg room in the back. So that's something that I really like, especially being a taller guy. I can fit my buddies in here. We can all pile in this thing, go down to the bar, go down to the restaurant for a Friday night, and go have some fun. So all in all, this isn't a real bad package. So for now, this is Brad with Lucky 7 Racing, the Cars Coffee Dinner Automotive event that happens in San Diego, California, and I'll see you guys at the racetrack in the next video.